All right, so I'm out here in a parking lot wearing this weird camera because I'm going to show you how to make your first uploads for Tracebook. Now, the first thing you want to figure out is whether or not your environment and conditions will even work to give you a high enough signal to noise ratio to know if your measurement will even be accepted in Tracebook. So that's the first thing we're going to do. So what I recommend you start with is the upload page. So log into Tracebook, open the upload page, and put in your speaker width and height. The way I found that was by just opening up the spec sheet for the speaker. And then over here in the bottom, I found the dimensions. And I put that in over here. And then this is going to give me two distances, gold and silver. And what I recommend is that you ideally start at the gold distance, 3.25 meters in this case. But if that doesn't work and I try all the things and I still can't get ripple low enough, then go to silver. So somewhere in between gold and silver. So these are sort of the bounds you have to work in. You can do your measurement any way you want, but at the end of the day, you must have less than 10 dB of ripple and be no closer than this silver minimum distance. So a rough estimate to know whether or not your room will be sufficient enough or whether or not you have a boundary that's potentially too close is just to take this silver or gold distance and multiply it by five. So let's take 1.63, multiply it by five, and we get 8.15. So that means that if I am in a room where all of the boundaries are at least 8.15 meters away, then I can almost be sure that this is gonna work out. I'm gonna go over here and stand where my speaker is. I'm gonna to measure to this closest wall. So the closest wall is 5.7, 5.8 meters away. But that doesn't mean necessarily that this won't work. It just means that we might have a little bit more ripple than expected, but that's okay. We're gonna go with it anyway, because it's actually really hard to satisfy this five times rule but it is a good number to look at to know if uh, you are very, very far away from that number, then you can expect to have more problems, okay? So long story short, small rooms with lots of boundaries or cases or, or anything in the way is gonna make it harder to do this. So if you wanna make this easier on yourself, go outside on a calm day, or like me, I'm, I'm close enough to this building to sort of provide a windbreak, but not so close. Um, that I'm going to have excessive ripple from the uh, bounce from this wall. Okay, so what are the elements, the components, to have a successful ground plane measurement? Well, we need a rigid floor. So I tried this inside earlier, and it wasn't working very well because I was up on top of a stage, and that was creating this baffle. So I'm out here on the concrete, so I have a rigid floor. Um, I have my speaker and my microphone on the ground, the last ingredient of a good ground plane measurement is to have the speaker aimed at the mic. So I'm going to start by placing the microphone at the gold distance, which should be 3.25 meters. So as you can see, I've propped my loudspeaker up here on top of a roll of tape. Um, you might want to try and find something a little bit more stable, but this seems to be working okay. Um, and then we're going to take our laser and we're going to try to place it somewhere in the middle of the high frequency driver because that's what we want aimed at the loudspeaker. So I know the high frequency driver is up here somewhere on this guy. So I'm pretty sure that the center is around here. So I'm gonna place my laser distance measure here and I'm gonna shoot the laser at the microphone. And as you can see here, I've actually tilted my microphone capsule ever so slightly even closer to the ground by just um, tilting it up here on the back with this microphone cable. It can be quite difficult to see a laser from a laser distance measure in the sunlight. So I put a little piece of tape on the speaker to help me aim, and I put a little box here next to the microphone, and hopefully that'll work. All right, so I've adjusted the aim of the speaker down at the microphone capsule. I'm gonna move this box away so it doesn't cause any problems. And now I'm going to do my first test here. Okay, so you can see the impulse response moving around a little bit, and you can see coherence dropping. That's from the wind, um, but I think it's okay. And I would much prefer to have, you know, a really low ripple through the entire operating range here 
than to worry too much about getting perfect coherence in the high end. So what I'll attempt to do is just sort of capture it between, uh, you know, gusts of wind. So how are we doing on our test here? We want to know two things. Are we measuring at least at the minimum distance? Yes, we're at the gold distance actually. And is ripple less than 10 dB? So what we can do is we can store this. And I know this is a little bit messed up up here. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset this by 10 dB. And what I can see here is that the peaks here have easily cleared the troughs here. So ripple is the difference between the peaks and valleys and the measurement here. So you can put your cursor here and then put your cursor here. But I find a, a quick, easy way is just to use the trace offset, offset it by 10 dB here, and we can see that the peaks of this guy have easily cleared the valleys of this guy up here. So I'm good on ripple. Another way to test this would be to set the coherence blinking threshold up to 95. Now notice that I have the coherence squared coherence off. Okay, this is off, so I'm using 95%. If this were on, I could use 91%. Okay, so 95%, all this disappears. Let's turn this back on. Okay, and I can see that uh, the vast majority here of the speaker uh, has higher coherence than 95%. But how much is enough? Well, another thing I can do on this spec sheet is look at the uh, operating range here. So this says 45 hertz to 19 kilohertz. And if I set a user zoom level here of 45 hertz to 19 kilohertz, and then I go to that zoom, then I can see, oh yes, okay, it stops here, it stops here, no problem. I've got the entire operating range here showing up above 95 I'm sorry, yes, above 95% coherence. So I did some uh, measurements earlier inside and they looked more like this, okay? And you can see that I've got a lot of missing data here. And while this is probably okay, um, leaving the coherence set like this at 95% is a, just a quick visual indicator that I'm losing a lot of data or that, you know, I have low signal noise ratio. Okay.